Speaker, thank you, Representative Captain Castor, for all that you do. Uh, and welcome to Port Tampa Bay. Um, <clears throat> uh, we are celebrating a terrific milestone for Port Tampa Bay and West and Central Florida uh, for the allocation of our res uh, receiving a raise grant uh, for the port. Uh, I'm Paul Anderson, President and CEO of Port Tampa Bay, and I'm just delighted to be joined uh, this morning by Representative Castor, uh, our County Commissioner Harry Cohen, who is also serves on the Port Tampa Bay Board, and two of our board members, our Chair, Chad Harrod, and also Hung Mai, our Vice Chair. We also have David Hale representing Tampa Tank Structural, one of the big tenants at Port Tampa Bay. Port Tampa Bay will receive $12.6 million in grant funding, which enables us to expand a critical piece of land and infrastructure for the next several generations use in, Port, in the Tampa Bay area. And we are very thankful to the U.S. Department of Transportation for our allocation of this uh, $12.6 million grant uh, that they made available through the RAISE Discretionary Grant Program. Our port was successful in receiving this, this allocation in a large part because of the long-term uh, support and dedication of Representative Castor. She has been tirelessly working on behalf of Port Tampa Bay, as she does for many other organizations, to receive federal dollars that will help build the infrastructure for generations to come. Uh, I would also like to recognize all of the other members of our delegation who collaborated. Our delegation is fantastic at working together and in, uh, in pursuing infrastructure granting uh, funding that is so critical to the citizens in our community and our state. Port Tampa Bay is the largest port in the state of Florida and the most diverse in the cargoes and lines of business that we handle. We handle a wide variety of bulk, break bulk, containerized cargoes, as well as being a fuel energy gateway for the citizens of Florida, a major cruise home, home port, and a major hub for shipbuilding for the southeastern United States. Port Tampa Bay will use raised funding combined with Port Tampa Bay funding to create Berth 301 at our satellite port facility, Port Red Wing, down by the Tico Energy Plant. This will provide room for a third large ship to be worked concurrently and efficiently and keeps us competitive in serving large vessels that are calling at Port Tampa Bay. And this project will have a generational impact on our community and our citizens uh, in terms of economic development and good paying job. And the grant funding complements private funding that has been invested over the last several years at Port Red Wing of approximately $300 million and port investment of about $50 million at the Port Red Wing terminal. Our, term, our tenants and our customers, including the Mosaic Company, Logistech, Conagra, Sesco, Arden Mills, and Tampa Tank will directly benefit for this project as they diversify their operations and make long-term financial and operational commitments to serving our region. This project makes an important and immediate economic difference for West and Central Florida, uh, non-containerized industries, including everything that goes into our road building and our housing and our construction, such as cement, prilled sulfur, aggregates, steel. It also complements food distribution and agriculture, wallboard and construction, and project cargoes that come in through Port Tampa Bay. As uh, over the last several years, Port Red Wing has seen tremendous growth both in the deepening and the expansion of the channel leading up, again with the support of Congresswoman Castor. And in the past 12 months, the port handled over 1 million tons of cargo at Port uh, Red Wing. And about 10 million people 
uh, that reside within a 75 mile radius of Port Tampa Bay uh, and over t as there's also over 200,000 new residents in the area over the last 10 years this is a critical uh, new uh, 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 infrastructure for the port and for our state and as area construction projects continue to boom we all see it uh, as Florida grows as population and people continue to want to come to our great state this project in this terminal will allow us to grow with the population growth that we're seeing in Tampa Bay. So at this time, uh, I would like to uh, let our Congresswoman, who has done so much to support us, talk a little bit more about the grant. Thank you very much for everything you were doing. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Paul Anderson, and it's a pleasure to be here with the uh, port officers my good friend, County Commissioner Harry Cohen, uh, Chad Harrod, Hung Mai, and David Hale from Tampa Tank, who's gonna talk a little bit about his business. Uh, but Port Tampa Bay is the lifeblood of our community. It is the economic engine that keeps everything running. Uh, it's an underappreciated economic asset. People that uh, shop, live here, go to school, are building new homes, uh, probably don't realize that it's Port Tampa Bay and all of the cargo and trade that happens here that is making sure that things are, that, that our economy keeps moving along. And we really need help right now to lower costs for families and, and help with supply chain, untangling supply chains. And that that's what Port Tampa Bay does. As the largest and most diverse port in the state of Florida, one of the largest and most diverse in uh, the southeastern United States, it is critical that we continue to invest in this important economic engine of Port Tampa Bay to lower costs, to grow jobs, to make sure the economy is running smoothly. So I'm thrilled uh, that we can deliver a $12.6 million investment in the port to modernize Port Red Wing and help the businesses grow and thrive there. Uh, Paul, you and your team have done an amazing job, an outstanding job of helping to lift this community and keep the economy moving, thriving. Uh, this is a wonderful place to live. And one of, the place, one of the reasons that is, is because we've been able to grow and thrive along, and Port Tampa Bay has helped fuel that success. Uh, this is part of that bipartisan infrastructure law that was signed by President Biden last year. And I remember very well when we had an early announcement here about uh, what the bipartisan infrastructure law would mean to the Tampa Bay area and Port Tampa Bay. And there were a lot of, what does this mean? When is the money going to arrive? What are, what's going to happen? Well, this is the first of many grants that will come to Port Tampa Bay to modernize the operations. But the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law is delivering better roads, cleaner drinking water, faster and more affordable internet, and it's gonna help us clean up Tampa Bay, which is also the lifeblood of our economy here. The bipartisan infrastructure law is creating good paying jobs that often do not require a college degree, providing more opportunities for working uh, and middle class families for years to come. Our intent uh, with the bipartisan infrastructure law is also to grow good paying American jobs, bring back manufacturing jobs, uh, make sure that we are buying American and building American. There are buy American requirements in the bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, but we know we have to invest in our ports, our waterways, and rail to reduce the supply chain bottlenecks, help ease inflation, and lower the cost of goods and services. So I'm thrilled uh, that this investment is coming here to this fantastic port, and I'm grateful for uh, everything that Paul Anderson, the the Port Tampa Bay uh, users, all of the hardworking people that come here every single day and sweat it out, making sure that our economy is growing and thriving. So thanks, Paul, and thanks to the entire Port Tampa Bay team for all that you're doing. And now we'll have uh, County Commissioner Harry Cohen, who also is a board member at uh, Port Tampa Bay, say a few remarks. Harry? Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul, and I will be brief. It is a great pleasure and honor to be associated with this 
awesome organization that means so much to our community and it is wonderful that we are making an investment in Port Tampa Bay and that's what we're here about today. Our Congresswoman has brought home a lot of money to this region uh, as a result of this bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill. This is not the first thing to, to come home to us. She also brought home money for I-75 and Big Bend Road interchange improvements as well as to the Florida Department of Transportation for their Heights Mobility Project. And the point of all this is that we are investing in this community. And this is another step in that process, investing in our infrastructure so we can grow into the future. So thank you very much for having me here today. I'm very, very, very glad to, to be able to share in this announcement. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Cohen. And I'll conclude by, again, uh, thanking Congresswoman Castor for the dedication to our community and to our region and to our nation in really pushing infrastructure for resiliency, sustainability, more efficiency, and helping uh, supply chain, which has become to the forefront of the American people. I want to thank our board of commissioners. Uh, our team, we have a great team, starting with our board, our chair, uh, Chad Herod, Vice Chair Hung Mai, our tenants who are represented by David Hale. And uh, the average person may never see this facility in person, but 24-7, 365 days a year, this will be working to support the uh, residents and the citizens of West Central Florida and Central Florida. And our team at Port Tampa Bay will help deliver these dollars efficiently, the project's on time, uh, and we are truly grateful to be one of the first recipients uh, of this raise grant. Thank you very much for coming today.